This is Dustin Headley and I work for the Institute for Digital Fabrication at Ball State University and this tutorial covers sending laser cutting prints to a universal laser cutter from Rhinoceros 3D modeling. Okay, so the first thing that I've done here is you can already see that I've opened up a file that I'm going to be laser cutting. You have something right here, you have all your laser cut stuff organized and scaled to the proper uh, scale that you want to cut this at and the first thing you want to make sure when you laser cutting out a rhino is you want to come over here and you want to make sure your units are set to the right uh, setting so I'm going to come over here and in the document properties set the units and you can see that they're set in millimeters and I need this to be set in inches since the laser cutter is uh, reads inches okay and uh, I also I just like it as a precautionary measure beef that up and usually makes rhino run a little bit more precise and accurately and I do not want to scale this as I want this to be a one-to-one -one translation since I've been modeling all this already. Okay, so now that our model is actually in the right unit setting, we can go ahead and start setting up the fabrication sheets. So I'm going to create a layer called Fab, and I'm going to change the layer settings to white. And the reason why I'm going to do this is I have uh, each one of these lines here, you can see, is set layer to a certain layer, and then the display color is by layer, and the print color is also by layer. So if I set this to white and I go in here and I draw a 32 by 18 box, which is the size of the bed of a laser cutter, you notice that it's white and it'll print white and I don't have to worry about it uh, printing th this box because it's not any of the registered colors for the laser cutter. So, All right, and so now I'm ready to place one of these, these guys into the laser cutting window. So I'll just grab this, come here, copy. Right, and then I'm just going to take this and I'm going to rotate this in. Now, you'll notice that I don't have my, I have certain snaps on, you can do this, so you can do a step over an inch at a time and other things like that. We're not going to necessarily go into that. I do have my O snaps on, which are important. I usually use end, point, mid, intercept, and etc. You can see these are just good to have on. So now when I place the laser cut, the stuff I want to laser cut into this sheet size, we take this and we organize, push this out into this about a quarter inch off the sheet size. And the reason why you do that is because the, the bed of the laser cutter is actually not attached to the laser cutter itself, so you can remove it. And what that does is it does two things. It allows you to put larger materials in, but then it also makes it so that you can't uh, necessarily count on it always being exactly in the right spot. So we need to have some off cut. Uh, allotted for that so that we can make sure we get everything laser cut the way we want it to. Okay, so now we've got this nice organized in, in a nested sheet and I, this is set to layer 6 and notice you can come in here and you can set this to any color. You can set this to red, uh, blue, and if you notice here the RGB values are 00, 00255 and that's important to note because it, it typically reads uh, those solid values the best. Green is also 255. Okay. So now I'm ready to do. go ahead and do the print. So here I'm going to do Control-P. And you see as the X660 pops up as the destination printer. And the laser cutter is actually just a glorified printer. It reads vector lines just, just like any other program, so, any other printer would, except that its output is a little bit different. So we first thing we need to do when we get in here is we need to make sure our page size is right. This looks right, but uh, let's just double check. Go into Properties, the Engraving field. Now we want to. We come in here and we look. The it's in inches. The width is 32 by 18. So th this is actually correct. If this is all out of whack when you come in here, you just want to maximize the page size and it'll reset these values to the the specs for the machine. Okay, and then click OK. All right. So we know where this is at. This is the right size and everything, right? So now we want to come down here and scroll down to the view and output scale. Now, the first thing I want to cover in this is the, the scale right here. You have one to one, and, and that's the, exactly what you want. Another thing commonly happens is scale to fit, and I'll show you what happens when you do that. But we want to we want to either do one of two things here. We want to draw a new window. We want to move a window. And what we want, we want to do is draw a new window. So we're going to take this, and you'll notice that it's scaling to the right, the proper size for this. But what we want to do is just come in here, and we've already drawn this, so we know this is accurate. So we can come in and click on that, and then we just press enter, and we're good. So, and you can see that this updated with the, uh, the sheet, the cuts in the proper location. Okay? Now if we come in here and we can move, we can take this and move this somewhere else, and we can just take that and move that back, because we know that's where it's at. Now, the scale to fit, we need to come down here, and you can see that this looks 
absolutely right. It looks everything looks appropriately placed. And then if we go down here to one to one, oh, what happened? No, oh. this is one to one. Oh, you see, I made a mistake here. I set the units wrong, and we're going here. We know we don't want to do that. We want to go back and Control P, and there it is. So, all right. So now here we'll just come back. If we do a scale to fit. You can see that it offsets everything in just slightly uh, and adds margins, which we don't want. So we want this to be one to one. Okay. And so then we want to come in here, and now that we've got this all set, one to one, we, we're in the right viewport. We have the window in the right place. And we want to go and do a properties. We are ready to set the laser cutter settings for this job. Now, this job was cut out of qu quarter inch acrylic, and it's important to understand that there, there are three laser cutters in the university, and each one of these has a unique uh, setting value sets for, depending on the material. So, depending on which machine we're going to be using, I'm going to be using the super speed, so I'm gonna, I can set this to run a little bit faster. Um, we can run this, and we'll just go over this right now. So we can run this a little bit faster and then on the other machines in the university. Now, if you, you'll notice here that this is all set to skip. Like you want these, sometimes they're set like raster vector or raster or just vector. And it's important that when you're not using these colors, you have them off just in case you have floating lines or hidden lines somewhere that you're not aware of and you don't want the printer to actually accidentally pick those things up. So that's just a precautionary measure. So let's go over the, the, the power speed and PPI settings here. Uh, the power obviously is pretty simple in the speed. I mean, these are ratios that you're going to set up, and it, depending on the material, it might it, sometimes it's better to run it faster at a higher power, and sometimes it's better to run it slower at a lower power. You know, that's something you're going to have to negotiate. The PPI, which represents pulses per inch, is something that is, is a setting that you're going to have to look at, and and it's important. This is a, an important setting in that. If you're cutting acrylic, you want this to be higher because it gives you a nice cleaner cut. But if you're cutting like a paper product, uh, a mat board or cardstock or something like that, you want to have this set lower to somewhere in the two, three hundred, maybe even five hundred range, so that this it, it'll fire it fires less and gives you a nice cleaner cut and also it'll burn less. So I mean that's important if you're cutting chip, making a chipboard model versus a plexiglass model. So just be aware of that. Okay, so we've got this set to vector, which is what we were going to do. Uh, setting this and if you want to do rastering areas and stuff like that I'll cover that in a different tutorial but um, you you want to just be aware that this rhinoceros is um, probably best for doing laser cutting and if you're doing raster areas like image and stuff like that you probably want to do that in Adobe Illustrator Okay. alright so we click OK and we've got our settings set we've got our proper everything is in the looks right in the screen we're one to one and we're ready to send this off to the printer or the, or the laser cutter. All right, so we just click print, and it's off, and that's it.